Hello my friends! Welcome to the 14th episode of the item guide series. Today we will talk about the last 4 attack items. Bloodlust Axe, Horse Claws, Berserker's Fury and Rose Gold Meteor. We have no time to waste today, so let's jump right into today's topic and talk about Bloodlust Axe. As always, we start with the stats. You get plus 70 physical attack and plus 10% cooldown reduction. It also has a unique 20% spell bump effect and is also the only item that doesn't have any passive or active effect, apart from a few boots. But before we get into the demonstration, I want to quickly explain you what spell bump is. If your hero has spell bump, you regenerate HP when you deal damage with any skill. It does not work with basic attacks. For that, you need physical lifesteal. Magic lifesteal also exists and this works with all magic damage you deal, regardless if you deal it with basic attacks or skills. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the demonstration. I'm using Jawhead for the demonstration. As you can see, after I throw bot Layla up, I regen 158 HP, what is exactly 20% of the skill damage that I've just dealt. The regen doesn't work with basic attacks though, as I said before. So overall, it's a very simple item. But there are many items with which you can combine it. I give you a few examples. War arcs give you additional cooldown reduction and is a good item to increase your physical attack. Endless battle also gives you cooldown reduction and physical lifesteal, what lets you recover HP no matter how you deal damage. And the true damage effect increases your damage, so you can combine skills and basic attacks very nicely. Oracle gives you more cooldown reduction and increases your HP regen by 30% which is very useful if your enemy build anti-heal items for example. And lastly, Queen's Wings, which increases your spell vamp once your HP is below 40% and also have a 10% cooldown reduction. If you want to know more about any other items, check out the whole playlist at the end, because I covered almost all items until now. In general, it's a good idea for most heroes who use spell vamp to build items that reduce their cooldown times by at least 30%. That means you can spam around your skills and therefore deal more damage and also regenerate more HP. Just remember, the cooldown reduction is kept at 40%. Now to the heroes who can use this item. You can build it on all heroes who benefit from the spell them effect, because they deal a lot of skill based damage. Examples are Fanny, Ruby, Belmont, Alpha or Paquito. They also benefit from the cooldown reduction, because they mainly use skills to deal damage. What you definitely shouldn't do is building it on heroes who mainly use basic attacks. A good example are marksmen like Leslie. Her first skill only enhances her basic attack, so she doesn't benefit from the spell vamp at all. On her, you can build items that give you physical lifesteal, like Heart's Claws for example. Awesome transition number one, check. We start again with the stats. You get plus 70 physical attack. It also has a unique plus 20% physical lifesteal effect. Again, physical lifesteal only works with basic attacks that deal physical damage. It has one passive effect, and it's called Insanity. When your HP drops below 50%, your hero will get an additional 15% physical lifesteal. This doesn't have a cooldown, but the effect ends as soon as your HP is over 50% again. Ambulance, go away. I'm using Jawhead again for the demonstration. As you can see, skill based damage doesn't work to trigger the lifesteal effect, but basic attacks does. Again, 73 HP is exactly 20% of the damage that I've just dealt. Now that my HP is below 50%, I recover 128 HP instead of 73 and the 15% extra physical lifesteal stays until I have more than 50% HP again. First, let's talk about which items you can combine it with. The first one will be Endless Battle. It gives you another 10% physical lifesteal and it has the already mentioned true damage effect. These two items work really well together. Otherwise any other item that increases your basic attack damage or your attack speed is very helpful, because more damage or attacks also means more HP regeneration for you. Berserker's Fury will be an example, but I haven't talked about the heroes you should build this item on yet, so that transition is too early. Damn it. I would strongly suggest to build it on marksmen who deal a lot of damage with basic attacks, like Leslie, Layla, One One or Mia, as one of their last items. In the late game, you as a marksman deal so much damage that with this item together, you can become really difficult to kill because you can regen and absorb amount absorb because you can regen and absorb amount of my because you can regen and absorb amount of HP with this item. 
It increases your chances of surviving much more than many other defensive items. And also increases your damage further. You can also recover your HP on a single jungle creep. So you don't have to recall back to the base anymore. And again. You can also increase your lifesteal by dealing more damage. Especially with crit damage. Which you can get from an item like Berserker's Fury. Awesome transition number 2. Check. You get plus 65 physical attack and plus 25% crit chance. Crit chance means obviously the chance to deal crit damage. It also has a unique plus 40% critical damage effect. Which increases your damage by 40% when you deal crit damage. Again, it's obvious. But I want to be as clear as possible. It also has a passive effect and it's called DOOM. Once you deal crit damage, your hero's physical attack increases by a life changing 5%. This effect stays for 2 seconds and has no cooldown. What means if you deal non-stop crit damage, the effect stays active until you haven't dealt any crit damage for 2 seconds. The demonstration is pretty pointless here. Because you don't really have to think about anything when using this item. Well, if you're completely new to the game, this is how crit damage looks like. Just that you saw it once. The more interesting thing to talk about is which items you should combine it with. Since it increases your crit damage, you should definitely build items which increases your crit chances or your attack speed. One obvious combo is with Scarlet Phantom. Since it since since it incre since it's <laughs> since it increases your crit chance massively. Another good combo would be Wind Talker. It increases your crit chance by 10% and your attack speed by 40%. And more attack speed means more chances for crit hits. Other attack items like Blade of Despair, which boosts your physical attack, Malefic Roar, which lets you take down tanky heroes, or as mentioned before Harsh Claws, which gives you physical life steals, are also good choices. Now, on which heroes should you use it? One obvious choice are Marksmen, who really need crit hits to become damage machines. Generally speaking, you can build it on any hero that deals physical damage. The question you need to ask yourself is, if the crit chance is really worth replacing another item in your build. So for example, let's take Badang. You can build crit items on Badang. But that means you can't use the combo of Golden Staff and Demon Hunter Sword anymore. Watch the first episode of the item guide series if you want to know how they work together. For me, the combo of those two items are better than the crit build for Badang. But you may see it differently. Pro tip. Whenever you are unsure about your build, test it in a classic match. Classic is really awesome to test out many things. And don't worry about your win rate. No meteor will hit you when you lost a classic match. And talking about meteors, let's talk about Rose Gold Meteor. Awesome transition number 3. Check. Booyah! It gives you plus 30 magic defense, plus 60 physical attack and plus 5% physical lifesteal. It also has one passive effect and it's called Lifeline. Once your HP drops below 30%, a shield is generated that absorbs 510 to 1350 damage. The amount of shield increases with your hero's level. It also increases your magic defense by 25. The shield and the increased magic damage last for 3 seconds and has a cooldown of 40 seconds. From this you can already see, although it's an attack item, you can see it as a hybrid of an attack and defensive item. Let me show you the shield quickly. After my HP dropped below 30%, the shield is generated and it lasts for 3 seconds. The cooldown of this effect you can see with this little icon. So, in which situation should you use it? Well, first your enemy should have at least 2 heroes that deal magic damage. If that's not the case, you should build a physical defense item instead. Then I would suggest to use it on fighters who need to sustain long hand ganks. But where you also want to increase the physical attack further. Examples are Jawhead, Alucard, or Leomord. You can also build it on marksmen or assassins if you want to have an item that increases your chances of surviving. Now, go and check out the whole item guide playlist if you haven't already. And don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're awesome of course. Thank you all for your support and see you next time. Have a great day.